Okay. You guys have been requesting a video on the tissues, so ask and you shall receive. Um, we're going to go through and we'll do this in two different sections. We'll do a video on epithelial tissue, and then we'll do a video on connective tissue, um, and then just kind of finish up with muscular tissue and nervous tissue. Um, <clears throat> the tissue component is typically nice covered in the lab, but it's kind of lecture material as well. Like part of this, I'll go through slides and explanations, and then we'll look at pictures of the tissue. Um, and the reason for that is that I want you guys to learn to analyze the tissue. You can't just look at a picture and recognize what it is. You can't, because different pictures look different. The, um, depending on where that type of tissue is coming from, it might look different. Depending on what stain you use, it might look different. So you need to learn how to look at the picture and analyze it to figure out if it's epithelial, what kind. If it's connective, what kind. If it's muscle, what kind. Um, so we'll do that. Uh, I'll teach you guys how to analyze it. We'll look at pictures up here, and then I'll show you pictures in the actual lab manual as well. Um, because your professor might pull up something on a microscope. They might show you a picture from Google. They might show you a picture from your lab manual. You never really know, so you should be able to analyze it regardless of where the picture is coming from. So we have four key types of tissue. Um, we're going to start today by talking about epithelial tissue. The second video will do connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. Epithelial tissue is a lining tissue. So this is the tissue that lines an open surface. So on the surface of your skin, this is epithelial tissue. Lining inside your mouth, that's epithelial tissue. Inside the vagina, that's epithelial tissue. Um, lining inside a blood vessel, that's an open area, so that's epithelial tissue. Lining your bladder, epithelial tissue. Okay, any open surface is lined with epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue has a few key characteristics. One, it has a high degree of cellularity. That means it's got a bunch of cells. The cells are jam-packed together, right up against each other. So you'll see like cell, 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 right next to each other. Not a lot of extracellular matrix. There's not a lot outside the cells because everything is just cells. Um, or you'll see the cells might be flat but you'll see them layered on top of each other, one after the next after the next. Again, this is because epithelial tissue is a barrier. It wouldn't be a very good barrier if you had like a cell here, and then a cell here, and then a cell here all scattered. Stuff would seep out of you. You need the cells to be jam-packed really closely together if they're gonna be a good barrier. So a high degree of cellularity. Um, epithelial tissue also displays something called polarity, like two different poles right? Two different sides. That just means that one side of the tissue is very different from what's on the other side of the tissue. Again, because it lines an open surface. So like the skin, for example, if we look at your skin, it looks like this. There's lots of layers of cells, right? And the very bottom, there's this membrane called a basement membrane, okay? And the basement membrane is what connects it to the connective tissue underneath. Okay, so this is the epithelial tissue up here. Down here we have connective tissue supporting it. They're connected to each other by this basement membrane. Okay, so this is tissue underneath. This surface is called the basal surface. So basal is like the bottom surface or the deep surface. Now we said it lines an open space. So that's the deep part that's within you. The other side of the epithelial tissue is lining an open surface. So it's completely different, right? It's open. So up here on top of the surface, this is the air, right? That's an open area. That surface is called the apical surface. So the apical surface is the top surface that's lining an open area. The basal surface is the bottom of the epithelial tissue where the basement membrane is. Okay, all these proteins and connective fibers that connect it to the connective tissue underneath. Epithelial tissue is innervated, but avascular. Innervated means it has nerves, right? I can feel this. I can feel it. If I put something super hot there, I can feel that too. I can feel a pinch, I can feel pain, I can feel a texture. I have nerves. Um, we do not have a blood supply. Okay, so these veins, these vessels that you see, those are underneath the epithelial tissue. Those are down deeper in the connective tissue below, um, or even below that sometimes. The epithelial tissue does not have a direct blood supply. It does not have vessels in it which makes sense. If I had vessels right on the surface, any little scratch would make me bleed out. Um, I need them to be down deeper so that they don't get damaged. They're protected when they're down deeper. 
So that's kind of a basic of epithelial tissue. Now, when we name epithelial tissue, um, we name it based on how many layers of cells there are and what the shape of the cell is. Um, now, right off the bat, what I tell you guys is when you're looking at a picture of tissue, which we'll see next, the first thing you want to do is figure out, is it epithelial tissue or is it connective tissue? Like, generally, what am I looking at? If you see an open area, it's epithelial tissue. So if you see a huge white blank space or like a perfect white circle where there's nothing, right, like a nice open lumen, it's epithelial tissue. You have to see an open space. So if I know it's epithelial tissue, then the next two things I said, how many layers of cells, what shape are they? If there's one layer of cells in the epithelial tissue, we say that it's simple. Simple means one layer. So here, this is the basal surface on the bottom. This is the apical surface on the top. This is all open, right? That's all free. Nothing is there. So you look, there's one zone, one zone, one zone, right? They're not stacked. There's one layer, so we say it's simple. Stratified means there's, whoops, stratified means there's multiple layers. So if you look here, this is the epithelial tissue. This is the basal surface on the bottom. This is the apical surface that's by the free open area that's lining the outside. Look, there's one, two, three, four, five. There's layers of cells on top of each other. So that is stratified. The next thing we need to look at is the shape of the cell. And the cells could come in three different shapes. When we're looking at the shape of the cell, we look at the shape of the surface cells. Um, as we'll see, sometimes when it's stratified, when there's multiple layers of cells, the cells will kind of change shape as they go up towards the top. So we're gonna name it based on the cells at the top, not the bottom, okay? We'll just see that a couple times if that will happen. Cells are either squamous, columnar, or cuboidal. Close. Um, squamous cells are flat cells. Hey, they're perfectly flat. When you look at them from the side, they look kind of like fried eggs because they're so thin that they kind of, whoa, that's weird. Stop. They kind of swell um, where the nucleus is. So they get bigger and then they get flat again, like a fried egg does from the side. So this is the nucleus, right? And they're really long, kind of flat, squish cells. Those are squamous. From the top, they look kind of like tiles. Um, like when you look down at them from the top, you just see they're flat shaped like that with the nucleus in the middle. Um, columnar are like columns, they're rectangles. They're long and thin and stretched out. So this is a columnar cell. The nucleus is normally down towards the bottom of it. Sometimes it's more in the middle though. A cuboidal cell is cube shaped. Okay, so it's like a square with the nucleus right in the center. Okay, so cuboidal, columnar, and squamous. So we'll start with simple, squamous epithelial tissue. Simple means there is one layer of cells. Squamous means that the cells are gonna be really thin and flat. Epithelial tissue means it's gonna line some sort of an open space. Okay, so this is just a general drawing. We'll look at the real pictures in a second, but this is all open, right? These are all big, it's a lumen, an open space. So this tissue that's going around the outside of it that's epithelial tissue lining the open space. When you look at this, it's one single layer of these long flattened cells. Okay, so that's simple squamous epithelial tissue. Um, a single layer of flat cells. We see these in a lot of areas. Um, we see them in alveoli. These are little like air sacs in the lungs. So when you look at the lungs, you've got all these tubes that bring air in. And then at the end, you'll have this little chamber that's alveolus. So the air comes in here, right? And we need the oxygen to go from here and to cross over into the body. So we line it with this super, super thin layer or one single layer of flat cells so that it's a really thin barrier for the air to cross into the body. Imagine if I had these huge cells here like this, it would be really hard for the air to actually cross that big, long, thick piece of tissue. So simple squamous cells are places where we need diffusion to occur. When we want things to cross the membrane really easily, okay, so it allows materials to cross easily. So here we see a couple different views of simple squamous epithelial tissue. These ones are difficult. 
um, to analyze the way I normally would because they're from an apical view. They're actually looking down at the tissue from the top. Okay, so when you see something that looks like this, it looks like tiles with the nucleus in the center, right? So they're all right up against each other. Notice there's no space in between them, up between the cells, right? So you see the plasma membrane in the center of each of them, you see the nucleus. Okay, these cells are all packed right up against each other. Okay, this is simple squamous epithelial tissue. So there's just gonna be one layer of cells there. If, but you're looking at it from the top. That's why you don't see the open space. Okay, again, it's the only one that's gonna look like these. Um, this is a section of it, so you can actually see the open space. You can see the lumen. So this is all the open space right here. This is nothing, this is just air, right? So the tissue that lines the outside of it must be epithelial tissue. When I'm naming my epithelial tissue, the first thing I'm gonna do is say how many layers of cells, and then what are their shape. So this epithelial tissue, it starts right here where these arrows are. It's just this. All this underneath this really messy looking stuff, that's all different, that's connective tissue. I'm just looking at this thin layer right here. Okay, so it's one layer of cells, right? There's one, there's one, there's one. So that means it's simple and the cells are flat, right? They're not square, they're not long columns, they're flat, so it's squamous. So it's simple, squamous epithelial tissue. So the next one that we'll look at Why is this not changing? That's weird. I don't know how to unfreeze it. type of epithelial tissue is simple cuboidal. Okay, simple means what? One layer of cells. Cuboidal means what? That the cells are cube-shaped, right? They're square-shaped. Epithelial means that it's lining an open area. So a single layer of cube-shaped cells. Again, remember with these cuboidal cells, you see a nucleus nice and centered right in the middle like that. So a central round nucleus. We see these in parts of the kidney tubules. Um, and then also in some glands, like the thyroid gland, the salivary glands, because they're good for secretion. So they'll secrete like saliva, um, or they'll secrete the thyroid hormones. So looking at them, this is the lumen, right? That's the open space. So this layer of tissue that surrounds the open space is the epithelial tissue. Um, again, we've got one layer of cells, and they're cube-shaped. Right, they're squares with a nice nucleus in the center. Let's look at the real pictures. This one gets kind of messy. Um, this one's beautiful. This one's also beautiful. Okay, so this is the lumen, right? This is the lumen. That's an open space. Anytime we have this layer of tissue lining an open space, it must be epithelial tissue. I can look at this and this is one layer of cells, right? There's not cells stacked on top of each other, it's just one cell, one layer, right? All next to each other. Same thing here, it's just one layer. So that's simple. And look at their shape, they're cube shaped, right? They're squares with a nucleus nice in the center. So it's simple, cuboidal, epithelial tissue. Again, we find them in the kidney tubules, we find them in some glands. Okay, so we had simple squamous, where there was one layer of flat cells. We had simple cuboidal, where there was one layer of cube-shaped cells. Now we have simple columnar, where there was one layer of column-shaped cells. So simple means there's one layer. Columnar means the cells are tall, column-shaped, so they're tall, rectangular cells. The nucleus is normally kind of towards the bottom part of it, but not always. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> sometimes when we look at this tissue, we'll see goblet cells present that so can secrete some mucus, but not always. Um, and sometimes we'll see cilia present, but we'll look at that later. When we look at these cells, they're really important for absorption and they can be important for the secretion of mucus. So we can see them present in parts of the GI tract. Um, we can see them present in um, parts of the reproductive tract as well, where they've got cilia to move the egg along the surface of the cells. So both of these are showing us simple columnar epithelial tissue. Um, this is from the GI tract, okay, from the small intestine. So this is all open space, right? That's a lumen. It's open inside the GI tract. It's an open tube, right, that food passes through. So when we look at this open area, this open lumen, it's layered or covered with a layer of epithelial tissue. So from this all the way up, this right here is all the epithelial tissue. When you look here, each one of these rectangles is a cell. And this dark area is the nucleus. So this is one layer of cells, and each of the cells are these tall, thin rectangles. They're in these long columns. So that's simple columnar epithelial tissue. This tissue happens to have microvilli on the surface, not cilia, but microvilli. Um, this one's got these tiny little like hair-like extensions. Those are important for absorption. They increase the surface area of the cell for absorption, um, which is really important in the small intestine. Looking here again, this surfacey part, that's the epithelial tissue. This is connective tissue underneath. Notice how unorganized it is, right? This is the epithelial tissue lining all this open space. Um, these are long, thin cells, one layer of them. So that's simple columnar epithelial cells. Okay, you see the nucleus, the dark area at the bottom. This is a goblet cell. Um, again, a goblet cell secretes mucus. So it would secrete a nice thick protective mucus um, under the surface of the cells. But that's simple columnar. Okay, so now we'll talk about a couple types of, or oops, first we'll talk about pseudostratified. So we just looked at simple epithelial tissue. Simple has one layer of cells. Stratified has many layers of cells. Pseudostratified is like fake stratified. Pseudo means false. So it's like, it looks like it's stratified. It looks like there's a bunch of layers of cells, but there's really not. Every single cell is anchored at the basement membrane. Every single cell actually touches the bottom, touches the basement membrane. So they're not actually stacked on top of each other. So it looks like it's stratified, but it's really not. So we call it pseudo-stratified columnar epithelial tissue. Um, again, it looks multi-layered, but it's not. The way that you can identify this is that it looks columnar. There are these really tall cells. However, the nuclei are not nicely organized. You don't see the nucle nucleus, 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 all in a row. You see the nuclei all scattered at different levels towards the bottom. That's how you know it's pseudostratified columnar. Basically, the nuclei are all at different levels. Um, we see cilia present on a lot of these. Um, they, we find them in the respiratory tract. Remember the cilia are these little hair-like extensions on the surface that move. They do this to push mucus across the surface. Um, and that's important again in your respiratory tract. You don't want the mucus to drip down into your lungs, so the cilia move it like this up towards your throat, and then you <coughs> cough out the mucus. Okay, so we see a couple different examples. Um, here the tissue starts at this basement membrane and goes up. So that is the epithelial tissue. This is all open space up here. This is connective tissue underneath. It's a lot messier. So when you look at this, these cells, notice how you see the nuclei clustered at all different levels, but it's all on like the bottom. Okay, so like the bottom, like two thirds of the tissue, you'll see the nuclei at all different levels. So it looks stratified even though it's not. Okay, so that's pseudo-stratified, ciliated, 
columnar epithelium. Ciliated because it has cilia on the surface. That picture is really difficult. This one's a little bit better. Um, so this is all showing us the epithelial tissue. Okay, notice here you can kind of see these long column shapes of the cells. Okay, so we know it's columnar. And because the nuclei look like they're stacked, it looks stratified, but it is not. Okay, it's pseudo-stratified. Um, again, you can tell because the nuclei are all at different levels on the bottom like this. If it was simple columnar, then the nuclei would all be in a row like that. Okay, we'll see another type of tissue in a second where the nuclei go all the way up to the top. So those are like the key difference. Where is the nucleus? If the nucleus is in the bottom two thirds, pseudo-stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. If the nucleus is straight in the center, it's simple columnar epithelium. Okay, if the nuclei go all the way up to the top, we'll see in a minute that's gonna be something called transitional epithelium. Okay, so now we'll look at some different types of tissue where the cells are actually layered on top of each other. So this is when we have multiple layers of cells, we call it this stratified epithelial tissue. The multiple layers of cells provide protection, okay? Um, so like this skin right here, we have a bunch of layers of cells. Why? Because it gets damaged all the time, right? There, I'm scratching off tons and tons of cells. When you shower, when you dry off, when you get dressed, when you bump into something, you're constantly losing cells. So you need multiple layers so that you don't end up with ulcerations and holes present. Same thing in your mouth, right? You take a bite of food, you're chewing, you're swallowing a chip, uh, you scratch away at that tissue, the vagina, the anus, same thing. We need multiple layers of cells to provide protection. Sometimes we'll keratinize those cells. That just means we add a bunch of keratin. Keratin is what makes your skin strong, what makes your hair strong, what makes your nails strong. Um, keratin is also water resistant. So that's why like our skin, you can put your hand in water and you don't automatically fill with water or why our insides don't just seep out of us because this, this layer on the outside of our body is keratinized. So it provides water resistance or water protection as well. Um, again, we already mentioned this, but when we're assigning the cell shape, we look at the cells at the top, right? In the apical layer. So we'll look at stratified squamous epithelial tissue and you guys should be able to identify keratinized stratified squamous epithelial tissue and non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Okay, this sounds like a lot, but it's really not. You should be able to analyze what we're talking about based on the name. Epithelial tissue, we're lining an open area, right? We're lining the mouth, we're lining the vagina, we're lining the, the skin, something. Stratified, we've got a bunch of layers of cells. Squamous, the cells on the top are thin and flat. They're not thick squares, they're not tall columns, they're thin and flat. That's it. Keratinized, we see a ton of dead keratin on the top. Non-keratinized, we don't see that dead keratin on the top. Okay, so it sounds like a ton, like it's really hard, but every word tells you something. Um, again, multiple layers of cells provide protection. Um, the cells become more flat as they go towards the surface. Keratinized means we just have the dead keratin packed stuff on the top. Non-keratinized means we don't. So the keratinized stratified squamous we see in our epidermis. That's the top layer of your skin. Okay, so you remember when you were kids, like did you ever say the joke, hey, your epidermis is showing? And the friend's like, oh, but yeah, everyone's epidermis is showing. Like this is your epidermis, big outer layer of your skin. That's keratinized. You have this thick, dead skin on the top, right? These dead skin cells. Um, it's dry. That keratin provides water protection, water resistance, so that this isn't moist all the time. Non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelial tissue line all of the open areas that are wet. So your oral mucosa, okay, lining inside your mouth, inside the vagina, inside the anus. Um, these are all moist membranes. They're still stratified because they need protection, but they're not keratinized. They don't have that water resistance because we want them to be moist. We release a lot of moisture onto those areas. So let's look at them. These are both 
stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Um, this one is keratinized. This one is non-keratinized. Okay, so let's look at it. The tissue is going from the curvy line up. So this to this, that's the epithelial tissue. This is all open, so that's lining this open space. That's outside the body. Same thing here, it's from this kind of curvy line up. That's the epithelial tissue. Okay, so this is outside the body. This would be like in the mouth or the esophagus or something. So when we look at this one, it's from the curvy line up. It's epithelial tissue because it's lined with this big open space. It's stratified because I have numerous layers of cells. This might be kind of hard for you guys to see because it's small, but there's like all these dark spots are showing you nuclei. Okay, so there's numerous layers of cells. So you can have hundreds of layers of cells here. The cells are really flat. Okay, you can kind of tell just by how jam-packed close they are together. If they were nice big squares, you would see them. <laughs> if they were these tall rectangles, you would very obviously see them. They're relatively flat cells. So they're squamous. So stratified squamous epithelial tissue. This is keratinized because this. See all of this? You don't really see anything, right? It's just bland junk. There's no nuclei left. The nucleus has disintegrated. It's literally just sacks of interconnected keratin. So it just looks like a sheet of this dead skin cells of keratin. So this is keratinized because of that layer. Look over there, you don't see it. Okay, so here, this is the epithelial tissue because it's lining an open surface. It's stratified. Look at these nuclei. You can see there are layers upon layers upon layers of cells, right? So stratified. And the cells are flat. Okay, when you look at them, look, I mean, they're flat little cells. You don't see like a nice square right, um, cell membrane. So stratified squamous epithelial tissue. It's non-keratinized. Because look, the cells go all the way up to the top. There's not a thick layer of just dead keratin on that. So that is non-keratinized. So in your mouth, your vagina, your anus, esophagus. The last type of epithelial tissue that we'll talk about is transitional epithelial tissue. This one is kind of weird. Um, we name it differently than all the others. It's transitional epithelial tissue because it's always in a state of transition. So it looks different depending on what's going on. Um, we see transitional epithelial tissue lining areas um, that change size and shape a lot um, and areas where we have to protect from osmotic damage. So we have to protect from all the solutes in the fluid. Transitional epithelium is very classically found in the bladder. We also find it in the ureters, the urethra. Those are the tubes that um, carry fluid to the bladder and then out of the bladder and out of the body. Um, but the bladder is kind of the classic answer here for where we see transitional epithelial tissue. And the bladder, obviously, as it fills up with urine, it stretches, right? And then after you pee, it shrinks. So that tissue is always in a straight of uh, a state of transition. It's transitional. The tissue can get really thin and flat as you stretch it. And then when it shrinks back down again, it gets kind of thick and frumpy again. So it's always in a state of transition. But the way that I identify this is there are multiple layers of cells. The nuclei go all the way to the top. The top cells are typically a little bit rounded. Okay, so let's look at this in reality. This is what it looks like. Okay, I know that this is epithelial tissue. Why? There's all this open space. Lining a big open space is epithelial tissue. Okay, so this under here is really weird and disorganized, right? So this is all connective tissue. But this tightly packed tissue from here all the way up to here, this is all epithelial tissue. Okay, so epithelial tissue. I'm going to look at this and say, okay, um, looking at my cells, I see I obviously have a lot of layers of cells. The nuclei are going all the way to the top, and the top cells are kind of rounded. That's transitional epithelial tissue in the bladder. Okay, um, now you might confuse this with pseudostratified epithelial tissue, but remember with pseudostratified epithelial tissue, the nuclei were scattered throughout like the bottom two thirds of the tissue. The nuclei did not go all the way up to the top. Um, also, you saw little cilia on the surface. You don't see those cilia present here. Right? And you didn't see these rounded surface cells. 
Um, also, it's not, I mean, like if you look at the stratified squamous, oops, if you look at the stratified squamous right there, look, these cells are a lot flatter. You don't see the nice big round cells. Okay, so the transitional has those really round cells up top. Um, the way that I would recommend you guys learning these is of course, go through them and learn how to analyze them, but then find ones that you'll easily mix up with each other and figure out how to distinguish them from each other. Okay, so look at the simple columnar and pseudostratified columnar. Make sure you can tell the difference. Look at pseudostratified columnar and transitional. Make sure you can tell the difference. Look at the stratified squamous non-keratinized and keratinized. Make sure you can tell the difference. Okay, put all of those things right up, like test yourself right now. Otherwise, if you don't do that, when you get to the test, you're gonna panic and you're not gonna be able to tell the difference between them. Okay, so analyze them, confuse yourself now, put the pictures right next to each other and figure out how you're gonna know which one is which. Okay, and remember the simple squamous tissue, the one layer of flat cells, when you look at it from the top, it looks like tiles. Okay, and it has a nuclei in the middle. So it looks like you've got these cells like this, and you have a nucleus in the middle. In connective tissue, we're gonna look at adipose. Adipose tissue is gonna look very, very similar to the simple squamous, but there's no nucleus in the middle. Okay, so that's how you tell the difference. If it has a nucleus in the middle, it's simple squamous epithelial tissue. If it's just these fat cells with no nucleus in the middle, that's adipose tissue. Okay, so we'll talk about that more next. You are very welcome for this video.